Nissan Skyline GTR R32 is a dream car for some JDM lovers. And when we are talking about R32, there is one famous car that comes to mind. For this video, I modified my Nissan timeline infographics to add the history of the three things that make this car great. In 1954, Nissan bought 60% of Nihon radiator share to ensure their radiator supplies. Nihon radiator became very good in cooling system technology, supplying parts for Formula One and racing cars, expanding its factory to California and rebranding its name to Calsonic in 1988. When they found good chemistry with Hoshino's racing team, it's not just sponsorship but also a racing technologies collaboration that continues even until today. Kazuyoshi Hoshino is national motocross champion before joining Nissan as a factory driver in 1969, dominating Japan Formula Championship in the 70s and 80s. With his racing experience in 1980, he decided to start Hoshino Impo a company that produced aftermarket parts for Nissan. Their first product, the Impul D1 wheel, used in Group 5 Nissan Silvia Silhouette. This moment is also where he got sponsored by Nihon Radiator or Calsonic. When Shinichiro Sakurai, the father of Skyline GTR, fallen ill, Naganori Ito was appointed to continue designing Skyline. At first, his Skyline R31 was not so successful, but his second creation, the Skyline R32 GTR, was so impressive. I will unbox three different Calsonic cars. It won't be an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, but let's explore the cars while discussing Calsonic's technical details and stories. Because it is in a gift set format, it has complete cards from six popular teams. It also has detailed liveries with sharp logos, rubber wheels, moving parts, and side mirrors, very rare for Tomica. Its headlights already use plastic and the rear lights painted smoothly, very different than its original Tomica regular casting. In my opinion, Tomica limited packaging is the worst among other Tomica boxes. It has uncommon and inconsistent box size, unpractical loading system, easy to tear or fold, etc. It doesn't have side exhaust, but provides fake metal paint. So, R32 twin turbo engine's anti-lag system sometimes bursting fire. So, there's always a metal plate in here. Its rims are a good try, but a bit too wide resulting in plastic looks. So in general, for a 2003 diecast with 1989 casting, this car has pretty much crazy details. It's very way ahead of its time. Their packaging is good, I love the minimalist design and the plastic protector. Sometimes they change the design, but always consistent in size. 
straight to the interior great details with roll bars it hangs a bit too low but still it's a good detail and only have one seat just like its real car nice rims and wheels nice exhaust very realistic Liveries are excellent and not only headlights but its rear lights also use plastic very detailed and this skyline board is molded into the body the nice thing about Mini GT is their underbody details so it's a perfect medium to discuss some technology under this car. All previous Skylines are real wheel drive, but we can see in here there is a box behind the gear. That's the transfer case. So that would make this is a rear drive shaft and it's supposed to be a front drive shaft over here. So the for uh, this R32 is four wheel drive. One of the secret recipes of this car is Nissan Bros electronic four-wheel drive technology called Atessa from Nissan Bluebird U12. It has many speed and gravity sensors with a chip controller that could command the transfer case to switch more as front-wheel drive depends on condition. Not only that, but Nissan also brought four-wheel steering technology, super high cast, from Fairlady 300CX and R32, uh, R31. The sensor would trigger the automatic steering for rear wheels that would help the car when turning at a fast speed. The Mini GT usual suspect is always these fragile rubber side mirrors and I think this defogger is a bit unnecessary or at least its line should not as thick as this. In general, this car is the best bargain for calsonic enthusiasts, very very recommended, affordable yet had amazing details I got this diecast from SS Toys a nice and responsive Tomica seller This car has the number one reigning champion sticker, so it is a 1991 Calsonic because it won the 1990 GTC championship. Since GTR R32 joined the GTC, it won all the 29 races. Calsonic itself won 15 of those 29 races. First, its liveries, very detailed logo, and its list or frames, very neat, headlights, and rear lights, already or always use plastic, the emblems, this is very detailed. The rims and rubber wheels, very realistic. And take a look at this trunk clips, very, very nicely done, very realistic. And these dry brake fuel holes are very detailed. So, uh, in the pit stop, the crew 
would inject fuel on both holes together using a hose and fuel can. The suspension is now very hard as a GT racing car is supposed to because uh, before in Tomica Limited version the suspension are too soft or too high. Maybe someday I'll make a video about why some recent Tomica racing car has no suspensions and got a flat bottom base. There's a story about it. And about the suspension system, there's some unique story about how Hoshino's unique driving style. So as a former motocrosser, he utilized the curb bumping, utilized the R32's for a while drive system to turn smoothly on the corner. Look at the base. Oh, it's more detailed than Mini GD somehow. We could see the transfer cast more clearly. And there's a front drive shaft actually. The windshield sticker is historically correct and pretty much bold choice because other brand is always used yellow but uh, the fact is in the early years Calsonic often used dark yellow or even a bit more orange color and the rear window is plain and clear this car also has an air jack system, very, very detailed. The racing version of R32 has an air jack system where the pit stop crew would inject a small hole in here with the air compressor and this air jack stands would lift the car up so the crew could change the tires. I was already impressed when Mini GT provide roll bars but this one got precise roll bars placement and was painted in blue with calsonic written on the dashboard. The final candy is this openable hood. In here we could see the RB26 DETT engine. And we even could see the twin turbo piping here. Very, very amazing. I actually prefer Calsonic's famous number 12. And by the way, its wheels are really not so smooth. But in general, despite its price, this is the most perfect die cast for Calsonic lovers, I think. And from its product code, LVN 234A we could tell and also written on its website by the way that there will be more of this story that would come If R32 was that good, our other JDM cars stood a chance in Group A racing? Well, at the time, in JTC1 class, no. But they still compete and dominating Group A racing in the other class, especially the JTC3 class. First, Toyota Corolla Levin. Toyota Corolla Levin AE86 or known as Sachiroku and then the AE92 after that is pretty dominating in the 80s maybe Toyota Sprinter Trueno is more popular right now but at that time most racing teams choose Levin over Trueno their difference mostly just in their pop-up light uh, or straight headlights Honda also very dominating JTC3 class with their hatchback variants of their Civic 
such as EF3, EF9 like this and EG6 uh, other than TLV and stock cars like this Tomica also released a racing version the Idemitsu Motion Mugen Civic is also an EF9 like this car